All right, so we're right at two o'clock right now. So I think we're gonna go ahead and get started with um, today's webinar. First and foremost, thank you everyone for attending today. Um, my name is Brian Dunham, I work at Hawks. I'll be kind of hosting this webinar and we are very happy to share and welcome Dr. McCarty for her teaching COVID style webinar today. Um, she's gonna go through her teaching COVID style webinar and towards the end, well, obviously you guys are gonna see a little Q&A option if you wanna ask any questions. We're gonna answer the questions towards the end of this webinar um, series today. So feel free to ask any of those questions in that Q&A and Dr. McCarty or myself, if it's a Hawks related question, we'll be happy to answer anything. So Dr. McCarty, it's all you. Thank you. Well, welcome everybody. You're actually learning about this from my living room in Michigan, where we have taken a turn from summer to fall. So I'm sitting here in a nice cool breeze, but uh, it's dark and rainy here. So hopefully wherever you're joining us from, um, your weather's a little bit nicer. But we're going to start with talking about teaching COVID style, which I'm sure um, no one has um, not heard of COVID, so we're not gonna get into that, but we're gonna go ahead and get started of what the webinar today will look like. We'll start out talking a little bit about who I am in the background, um, the spring from 2020 and how it shifted very quickly from face-to-face -to, -face to online, also including what we're doing fall of 2020 and how we're trying to have an authentic immersion in the classrooms, some online tools that I've found useful, and then certainly plenty of time for question and answers at the end. So first of all, who am I? So I have been a professor at Aquinas College and Aquinas College is a small liberal arts Catholic college located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I'm a one person math education department. I'm housed within the Department of Mathematics. However, if you're not clear on the difference, math educators work on helping students learn about how other students learn mathematics and how to teach mathematics versus specifically mathematical content. So our math education program has three courses and two of them are content related where the pre-service teachers are reviewing content from K to eight. And then we have a methods course in which we learn to enact those lessons and what that might look like in front of students. So I teach both face to face and online regularly, although my online courses have been general education courses in algebra and math for liberal arts. So shifting to online math education courses was definitely a change for spring of 2020. I have some contact information so that if after this webinar you have any questions, want to brainstorm, or want to share any of your ideas, I'm certainly open to that. This contact information is also available at the end of the webinar. But my address is sam009 at aquinas.edu or the office phone is 616-632-2145. So let's think back to spring of 2020, March in particular, we had, well, prior to that, let's start back in January where our classes started within the K-8 schools. So the Aquinas College courses took place on the campuses of other schools where we had our own dedicated classroom for my lectures and the students learning. And then during our class time, we also were able to go into an uh, actual classroom and either tutor in small groups or take over classrooms for the teachers and lead the students in math instruction. So every lesson plan and teaching experience that I had developed over the last 16 years was based on having access to real live students, having that authentic experience where our pre-service teachers could use their improv skills not knowing what their little students were going to ask them. Also practice using their vocabulary and methods that we had been talking about in the classroom and reading about in our texts. And so it was a wonderful experience. The classroom teachers appreciated having the extra help and some new ideas. 
so we were able to help their students and we were also able to gain the valuable experience. So it was definitely a win-win. We had one course that was situated in more of an urban school setting and one course that was situated in a private um, school setting so they were different settings so the students get to experience that as well as just have the opportunity to be in the classroom see what it takes for an elementary teacher to schedule their day and um, the challenges of interruptions so we leave on our spring break in march of 2020 and at the end of spring break we receive an email from the president of the college stating that we were going to have one additional week of spring break to prepare ourselves and our students to transition to 100 percent online so in one week all faculty and students were transitioning from what has been an ultimately almost entirely face-to-face -face college to an online learning experience and for me, we were out of the K-12 classrooms, K-8 classrooms, and I was um, struggling with trying to think about how can I reenact and give these students the same authentic experiences. So we shift to online learning with one week's notice. So what were some of the things that I had, I came up with quickly? Well, when we were in the Aquinas classroom, we did a lot of small group projects. So during that, we were gathered around tables, we were having discussions, I was available to pop in and out of groups, but I would no longer be able to do that. So I shifted to an idea of using a Google Doc in which the small groups could collaborate simultaneously and they were allowed to use the social media of their choice. So some students used Facebook, um, some students used um, oh, FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, anything that they felt comfortable in, and they collaborated on a Google Doc simultaneously. I was available to them if they would like me to join their small group, but I was not hovering in each group because they were they were meeting at times that were convenient for them. So while I say simultaneously, they were not using their class time. Their group of four students just had to pick a time that would work for all of them. And then I looked at the Google Doc and provided feedback before the next class session. So that was our feedback loop. The challenge of authentic teaching became real. The students in our K-8 classrooms were transitioning themselves and students were not as familiar at that age, nor were their parents with Zoom meetings and Google Classroom and things of that nature. So we lost our direct access to students at that point. The schools felt like it was just too overwhelming to have us joining in or participating at that level. So my teachers, pre-service teachers, then had to just seek out student volunteers, relatives, young sisters, brothers, cousins, anybody they could. In fact, one student has struggled so much, she set up a, a Zoom session with stuffed animals and um, acted both as the student and as the teacher to submit her project. And uh, I certainly gave her credit for the creativity and thinking what the students would be thinking was actually kind of interesting and worked out okay. So our teachers in the spring were just using Zoom with any volunteers they could to practice their lessons that they came up with. They, in addition, I decided to have them make videos for parents and students about math content. So since the students were not live, I was able to have them create videos on a topic that would be appropriate for students and parents to review at home and hopefully pick up the information. So when we started designing our lesson plans, we ended up thinking about, um, oops, sorry, I clicked way ahead, I'm gonna go back. So we, we started thinking about how we could design lessons and what those might look like. So um, one of the examples of my discussion boards for my own lessons would be this example of using probability and what this might look like in the classroom would be we would have spinners, the students and the pre-service teachers would be creating a data set and deciding um, why seven is oftentimes considered a lucky number and is it really lucky? And I'd be prompting them and pushing them on this conversation. However, when they were in their own groups, they may or may not have access to spinners. They, could, they were given one that they could cut out and use a bobby pin. They were also encouraged to use other things that might simulate this. They could use cards, they could use cards from the game Skipbo, 
anything like that. So part of our struggle with learning online was having the students who went home abruptly have materials that they could use that we typically had available to them in the classroom. So with that challenge, um, I, it was great as future teachers to have them think about other things that they could use. So questions like, is seven lucky? Why or why not? Um, and what does it take to make probability a fair situation? So the, the students would think about this in their small group, type their response. I would read their Google document and give them the feedback that was discussed. So that's a type of lesson that I developed. A type of lesson that a student might develop was using what we call math exchanges. Math exchanges is a specific type of conversation where a, a teacher and a student really work on allowing the student to come to their own conclusions and particularly be able to communicate. So communicate both verbally in writing and journals or whatever. So this is the screen of a student and her stu and her uh, my student at the top, which is a pre-service teacher, and her um, volunteer students who actually happen to be relatives of hers. And she posed this question to them, allowed them to talk with amongst themselves, and then she would interject. When she was all done, she uploaded this video for me to provide feedback. And it was wonderful because I could stop and show her how quickly she jumped in to respond, how it, she didn't allow any downtime for her students to think and um, talk with one another. She jumped in and she was eager to rescue, which is what I find quite often with my pre-service teachers. They go into this field because they want to help students, they want to help them succeed. So they oftentimes jump in a little bit too soon to um, interrupt the students' thinking. So this was what we worked on in spring. In the fall, we, as in the fall, meaning we started August 19th. So while it's officially not fall by the calendar, we have started fall semester. So August 19th, we were trying to think of what could we do to have an authentic immersion. Many of our local Michigan K-12 schools did not know even on August 19th how they were going to present their fall to their students. Some were starting with completely online for nine weeks and then going to make a decision. Some were shifting to two weeks online and then classroom face-to-face. -face. Some started face-to-face -face but um, rotated days with groups of students and the days that they were not allowed in school, they were to be doing online learning, kind of a hybrid with Wednesday being a disinfect day. Um, we have a wide variety around us in Grand Rapids of how they were going to enter the classroom. With that being said, teachers were overwhelmed in their own preparation for their teaching and were not sure how our Aquinas class could integrate with that without causing perhaps more work, more confusion, more technology issues and things like that. So we ended up um, working with just one school and we are able to do some authentic teaching with that school. Again, I always teach in small groups, so it was really important for me to come up with a way to do small group projects. This time, our college allowed us to do synchronous learning or simultaneous learning through our class time, where they were not encouraging that for the spring. So we use, I use Zoom. And I use the small group breakout rooms for collaboration in which the students can use whiteboards, share their screens, all sorts of things. That has worked wonderful because I can pop in and join the small breakout rooms and hear what they're saying, answer questions, um, call them back to the big group when I'm ready to reconvene, things like that. So I have really, really enjoyed the small group breakouts for our projects. Again, I oftentimes share a Google Doc with them so that they can um, make sure that their Google Doc is a collaborative document happening simultaneously, and the feedback loop is provided within the Google Doc. So our small projects really are being more productive this fall with that breakout room within Zoom. Um, so I found that helpful. As for authentic teaching, we are hoping to have our pre-service teachers teach live um, via Zoom into a classroom, third, fourth, or fifth grade. 
and they will work with small groups of students. So that is to start next month. So I'm not able to report exactly how that's going to work, but we're super excited about the opportunity to once again see students um, in that grade band so that we can have much more of an authentic experience than volunteers and family members that we had in spring. Once again, they'll continue making videos for students and parents and um, they will, they will teach their peers also using Zoom. So the pre-service teachers will teach to their other Aquinas peers um, doing certain things, demonstrating methods that we have learned. So we're using Zoom fairly heavily this fall um, as a recommendation from the college so that the students can continue to um, use one or two platforms instead of each professor picking their own. As far as lesson plans, um, we I designed something a little bit different this semester. Our math education content courses resol um, revolve around a sixth through eighth math curriculum, and that's how they're reviewing their math content in preparation of teaching K through five. So as we review the six through eight content areas, they design lessons that would have been building foundations to their own learning. So the Aquinas student is building a lesson, K through five, they get to pick. And for example, we just finished a linear algebra unit. So what topics K through five would support a linear algebra student in the future? So someone picked patterning in kindergarten and how important it is to understand patterns for algebra and so on. So this really helps the elementary teacher realize why it's important for them to have a strong content knowledge above the grade they're teaching, but it also should help them pick which things to stress in their own curriculum and spend time and which ones they have to pass on. We'll be developing four activities that will be distributed to the classrooms, third, fourth, and fifth grade. So we are designing and do this Wednesday, the activity that's hands-on that we'll be delivering in individual bags. So each student will receive an activity of their own and we'll be designing an online activity for the student to do on their own online. We'll be designing an activity that the Aquinas students do simultaneously online with the younger students. And then the last one will be a final project, will be an activity of their choice doing any of those three formats um, for their students. So what online tools did I use? So I was able to use um, Facebook Messenger, FaceTime, Google Meet, Zoom. We use a Moodle chat platform at Aquinas. So we had a chat live as far as online technology hardware that we've used. We use the swivel. If you're unfamiliar with the swivel, it's a lanyard that the teacher wears while an iPad or iPhone is hooked into the actual swivel. That way the camera follows you where you walk around the classroom. The swivel moves your camera automatically for you so you don't need someone recording, yet you're always the center of the of the video and the swivel lanyard has a microphone so that if you turn your back to the swivel, your, mic your microphone still sounds great. We've used laptop cameras. We've um, caught our screens in Screencastify so that as we're doing something, it's creating a video, iMovie, all of those types of things would be some of the online tools. So I tried not to restrict my students in what they used. And I also tried to use a wide variety for them to see how that would work. Our content was primarily in Google Classroom. And at the college, we're required to use what we call Aquinas Course Connect, which I mentioned was a Moodle-based platform. I already discuss, discussed my love for Google Docs and simultaneous um, contributions. We also did Google Sheets. Within Zoom, we've used the whiteboard application, both myself and also the students. I've used a graphic tablet um, pen, and some of my students have touch screens that they were able to share with. So we've used a wide variety in the last six months, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about some of my favorites. So one of my favorites is this graphic tablet. Some people call it a graphic pen. It's simply this black piece, of, it almost is like a clipboard, and it comes with a pen 
and you draw on the blackboard, which you don't see anything, but it projects on your screen. One of the reasons why I loved this is if any of you are working in a, in a situation where your IT department is very involved, if you need to upload drivers or things in your individual classrooms, it becomes really cumbersome for the college professor because we do not teach in the same classroom at our institution. So I couldn't couldn't have them upload a few drivers, they would have been against it. But this graphic tablet is simply a USB plug and it's ready to go. So it's wonderful. Every computer I stop at, I just plug it in and my pen is ready to go. The pen also acts as a mouse, so you'll know exactly what's happening um, because you'll see the light. So for example, yes, this is me with my mask on because one of my classes, I teach half of the class in face-to-face -face while the other half watches in Zoom. That's on Monday and then they reverse roles on Thursday. So I typically do a PowerPoint with some problems and then I use my graphic tablet to write over my PowerPoint and this is what it would look like. Um, and it's captured live during my Zoom recording so that students can actually see me working in real time if they go back and watch the video if they're absent due to COVID or any other um, absence. So you can change obviously the color of the pen or the ink that shows up. Um, but it's very, very simple to use. I have literally got this pen about two and a half weeks ago and I'm super comfortable with it and anyone could use it. So I highly encourage this. Um, this is a cheap, ten, I think they run between 40 and $90. Uh, mine happened to be 60. It was kind of middle of the road and it does everything that I'd like it to. Before I move on, I wanna just stop about this whole PowerPoint, Zoom, record, pen. One of the really nice things about doing this, so I'm teaching live to my class, so I see the faces. It helps me have the expressions and know um, what to write and where their questions are. But at the same time, my Zoom family is watching in live time and they're able to see this much better than they do the whiteboard behind me. In our institution, the webcam is located on a fixed PC in the classroom. So it only zooms to that picture that you see of me in the upper right is simply the amount of whiteboard behind me that the camera would capture. So between that and reflections of and running out of dark ink in your Expo markers, I really found that just writing over the PowerPoint really works better than any other screen capture or any other idea that I've done. Super easy, super fast. Zoom allows you to upload your videos for sharing. So with that, and I said that my presentation would take about 25 minutes and I'm a little bit ahead by a minute or two, but I do want to remind you before we open it up for question and answers to um, write down the contact information if you feel like you would like to reach out and brainstorm or hear more about what I'm doing, share what you're doing, or you simply can call. So the email is sam009 at aquinas.edu or the office phone is 616-632-2145. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can see you and I think that we're going to open it up for questions. Awesome. Well, thank you very 